Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the SkyTP demo part one. Now keep in mind, this is part one, so there is a part two. So look out for part two after you watch this learning bite. To begin, we will log into the JWeb interface for an VSRX device. And now that we have logged in, we can go to the administration workspace, SkyTP enrollment, and then we have a few different options. First, we can launch the SkyTP to get enrollment started, and then we can also apply a proxy profile. Now this is an HTTP proxy profile. This isn't an SSL proxy profile or anything like that, but in our case, it's not necessary. And then we have the initiate enrollment section, which allows us to paste in the enrollment command to enroll this current device with SkyATP. So to get started with this, let's go ahead and click the launch button. And doing so, it takes us to the SkyATP web portal and we can select our geographic location. We have a few different options, North America, Canada, European Union, Asia Pacific. We'll stick with the default of North America and click go. And here we can log in to an already created Sky ATP realm, or we could create a Sky ATP realm if necessary. I have already created a Sky ATP realm, and so let's just go ahead and log in. Okay, so here is the dashboard for Sky ATP. And before we get into any specifics about what's on this dashboard, let's go ahead and finish that enrollment process. So to do that, we need to go to the devices workspace. And we can see here that we have no devices. So let's click the enroll button. And after clicking the enroll button, we can see that we have two different options. The first option is for Junos versions 18.2 or later. The second one is for versions 18.1 or earlier. In our setup, we are currently using Junos 19.1. So let's go ahead and select the first enrollment command and click OK. Now we need to go back to JWeb for the VSRX device. OK, so here is the JWeb. Let's go ahead and paste that command in the enroll box and click enroll. Now you can see there is a status and it shows enrollment status in progress. That means it's working on it. And this will take six to seven minutes, such as it says there. And so instead of making you wait that six or seven minutes, I'm going to pause the video and I'll restart the video when the enrollment process is complete. All right, so the enrollment process is complete. You can see on the screen that it was successful. So what we can do now is jump back to the Sky ATP web interface and check things out there. Okay, so here is the Sky ATP web interface and it doesn't show anything, but that's just because we need to refresh the page. And now we can see that VSRX1 is enrolled for this Sky ATP realm. And we can click on VSRX1 to get more information. And we can find out more information such as the OS version, which is 19.1 R1.6 the model number, the serial number, the device name, submission status, and then we also have some configuration parameters as well as connection type parameters. So let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and we'll discuss some more SkyTP related parameters. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And so let's go ahead and go to the monitor workspace and then security services and then threat prevention and diagnostics. And here we can run some diagnostics commands. We can check connectivity and also check out some server details. So let's click on diagnostics. We can first select our region that we wanna run diagnostics for. We're gonna leave it at North America since our realm is in North America. Click run diagnostics. And this will take just a minute because it runs the diagnostics command on the VSRX device, and then we'll see the output from that command. And since this takes a minute or so, I'm going to pause the video again and restart it once the diagnostics is complete. Okay, so the diagnostics command is complete and we can see a few different things in here. We can see that it tested connectivity to the Juniper ATP servers. It shows which one it used. It shows reachability information as well as other parameters. But in the end, everything checked out okay. So this is a good command to use if you're having problems enrolling your device with SkyTP. Then if we go down, we can check connectivity, select check, 
and then we can see the server details about the connectivity check. And we can see the server host name, the realm we're connecting to, server port, connection status, as well as other parameters. Now this is good if you're experiencing connectivity issues with SkyTP after enrollment. For example, if files aren't being submitted correctly, you could check the connectivity and if you have a connectivity issue, then you could resolve that connectivity issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and hop back to the Sky ATP web interface. Okay, so here is the Sky ATP web interface. Let's go ahead and go back to dashboard. All right, so here is the dashboard. Here we have a few different widgets that are useful to get a quick glance at what's going on. And the first thing I want to point out is the map that we have here, the CNC server and malware source locations map. And here it will show where you're getting malware from, like what, what part of the world is the malware coming from or the CNC servers. The thing to keep in mind here is this is a setup that I set up inside of Juniper Education Services Labs. And so all the malware downloads have happened internally. And so you're not going to see anything on this map because of that. With the CNC servers, that is the command and control servers, I don't have anything like that internally as well. So there's nothing that's going to show up here. So that's something to keep in mind. We won't see any information or statistics on CNC servers, but we will see malware and infected host information as we go along. And we can change this by default, it's set to CNC servers. You can change this to malware source locations so you can see where the malware is coming from. You can change the time frame from one day, one week, one month, and so forth. And then some other widgets that you have, you have the top infected file categories. We see we have a bunch of executable. We have some archive. We're able to change the threat level for this widget. We see there's low threat, there's nothing for medium threat, then the default shows medium and high threat, and these are all high threats. You can go to high threat as well, and these graphs are interactive as well. You can hover over them and it'll give you information about what is happening or what has happened. And then we have top scan file categories, similar to the top infected host categories. And then we scroll down, we can see additional information. We have top malware identified, it's going to show us the type of malware that has been identified and also top compromised hosts. So we're going to see the different hosts that are compromised as well. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is anytime you see something that's a dark blue color, a lot of times it's interactive. A lot of times it's a shortcut as well. For example, the host, we can click on this host and we get taken directly to the host. And I'm not going to go into detail about the host workspace right here because I'm saving that for later. But just keep in mind that we do have shortcuts, like more details here for the widgets. We can select that. And we're going to find out more details about file downloads, specifically HTTP file downloads. And again, I'm not going to discuss this workspace much because I will discuss this workspace later in the video. Let's go ahead and jump to the configuration workspace next. And here in the configuration workspace, there's a few things that we can configure. Now, keep in mind that you will configure some things on the VSRX, such as the threat prevention policy, and we'll talk about that later in this video. But there's some items that you need to configure here, such as file inspection profiles, such as whitelists and blacklists, third-party feeds, and things like that. And here in the file inspection profiles workspace, this is how we are going to describe or tell SkyTP which file types and how big and what to do with those files. So let's go ahead and examine this one. We can expand it. We can see that we're examining documents, executables, library files, and PDF files. Now we can click the create button to create our own profile. And in here, there's going to be a list of different file types like archives, configuration documents, executables, Java, library, things like that. Once you select an option other than do not scan, you're able to select a file size. For example, with archives, if we select archives, say scan files to max size, then we specify a, a max size, and that can be up to 32 megabytes. Now, I do want to point out there are a few different options. We have do not scan, which is pretty obvious. We're not going to scan for those files. We have scan files up to max size, so then we specify the max size. And then we have hash lookup only. And it does say not recommended, because that's not necessarily recommended there. But what does that mean? Hash lookup only means that we're just going to send the hash of the file to SkyTP. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, there's a few reasons. First of all, it's going to be a lot quicker to only send the hash. You're just sending the hash information. You're not uploading a file to SkyTP. And then there's also the aspect of you're actually uploading something to the cloud. Your organization might not want to do that. And so doing hash lookup only stops the VSRX from uploading a file to SkyTP. So those are the different options we have. And the options are the same for each file type. 
And so any of the file types that you select are going to be part of this profile. Okay, so email management. Here we can specify SMTP and IMAP information and parameters. And I'm not gonna go into detail about this. It's definitely outside the scope of this course. But just keep in mind, if you need to configure email management parameters, this is the place you do it. So whitelist and blacklist. Whitelist is what you always want to allow. Blacklist is what you always want to block. So there's a few different options here. We can whitelist and blacklist items based on their IP or URL, based on their hash file, so their hashing information, email sender or CNC server. And with blacklist, it's the exact same options, but you just block instead of allow. So we do have third party feeds and I'm not gonna get into detail about this workspace because it is outside the scope of this course. But keep in mind, if you need to configure third party feeds, this is the place you do it. Then we have the global configuration where you configure the global threat level to block infected hosts. Then you have logging for malware and host status. And then you can also configure an administrator email to be alerted when there's an infected host and you specify the threat level when you actually want to send that email with the threat level threshold section. And then we do have threat intelligence sharing, proxy servers and rel management. Those are outside the scope of this course, but just keep in mind they are there. And then we do have the administration workspace. I'm just going to cover this quickly. This is where we're going to manage administrators. You can change the information for the person that's logged in with the My Profile workspace. You can change the password, email, first, last name, whatever. And then we have the users, which you can specify additional users and the role. Then we have multi-factor authentication. So for administrators who are logging into the Sky ATP web interface, we can set up multi-factor authentication. And then we do have application tokens, which are part of allowing other devices such as Policy Enforcer to communicate with Sky ATP using an API. All right, so that brings us to the end of part one for the Sky ATP Demo Learning Byte. So please look out for the Sky ATP Demo Part 2 Learning Byte. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence and the training community from forums to social media join the discussion